Is it really possible for the regular, everyday person to take advantage of quantum physics in order to heal past traumas? Are people today already using these methods and improving the quality of their lives in the process? Who are they? How did they learn? In the next hour, we'll take a look at what's happening not on America's West Coast, not in some far-flung remote region of the world, but right in the middle of America's heartland, as we introduce you to Time Travel with Jessica Alstrom. How many of us feel exhausted, feel fatigued, you know, feel worried, feel we're living in the future, we're living in the past? That is a byproduct of not being grounded and not being in the present moment. Because if you were in the present moment, all there would be would be this moment. The first thing that I do is I look at how much they're in their body. And I would say on the average, most people who sit down in my office on any given day are in their body 30-40%. Which means that consciously, they're not really here with me. They're not interacting with me completely as a whole being. They're here because they need help with something, but they're not really, really here. So the first thing that I do with anybody is I do a pretty intense grounding. I would like to take you through a grounding exercise okay. to get you back in your body. I'm so out of my body. I know. <laughs> take a okay. deep breath. I want you just for a minute to fully feel the chair underneath your body. Close your eyes. And the reason why I want you to close your eyes is I want you to be with yourself and not be stimulated by anything outside of you. Breathe all the way into your chest and feel the chair becoming more comfortable. Take a deep breath and breathe into your belly. Good. Now breathe into your legs. Feel the energy of your breath move into your legs. Breathe into your feet all the way down. Take a deep breath. Notice the sounds of the water behind you. Take a deep breath and breathe into the floor. And imagine that your breath is now traveling with intention all the way to the core of the earth. Breathe down and down and down and take yourself with you all the way down to the core of the earth. And keep breathing down until you feel a warm, loving, nurturing energy Touch your breath. And as you breathe back into your body, bring some of that feeling with you. Bring that nurturing and that loving energy back into your breath, back into your body, back into your heart. And right now, I want you to think of something that you love unconditionally something that just warms your soul. And as you get that feeling in your body, breathe that feeling into every cell of your body that is mixed with that loving, healing, nurturing earth energy. Now the nurturing, loving, healing energy of the earth mixed with your unconditional heart love, bring that energy up into your third eye and swirl it around. And in your mind's eyes, see all the things that you love. Now bring this feeling to your crown and let this feeling warm the top of your head. Good. Now as you breathe this energy through your body, I want you to imagine that your breath is now moving upwards. And take your breath up, up, 
up past the clouds, past the earth, past the stars, until you find what feels like love again. Feels like rainbow energy with sparkles. And when you reach that place with your breath, take a big scoop of that and bring that back down to your crown, down into your body, using your breath, and imagine that that is blanketing you, whole body, blanketing your whole system, and it's giving all of your cells a taste of this perfect, strong, loving, healing energy, and let it circle all the way through your body. And take one final breath, and integrate all of that energy right into your heart. One final breath. And you can open your eyes. Thank you. You're here. <laughs> You're in your body. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> it's good to be back. <laughs> I did the time travel process on myself to save my own life. I was so disassociated and so, su I was so suppressive of my own emotions as an adult that I was moving into that space where you stop feeling. It was like a numbness and I really needed to feel. You know, I mean, I had three kids, I have a husband, I have a life, I, I really wanted to feel. And obviously the time travel opened up the floodgates as we've seen how it does. And I was able to process a lot more of the shame and the guilt and the humiliation and the fear that is trapped into the timeline that holds us back. And everything that is those five emotions represents at the core, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not safe. Think about it. The last time you felt guilty, what do you keep from yourself when you feel guilty? What magic do you hold away from you when you feel guilt? When you feel shame somewhere deep down within you, what are you unconsciously resisting that could be of help? Well, I'll tell you. Money, time, love, Nurturing, we unwillingly keep all of these things from ourselves when we feel guilt and shame. You know why? Because at the basis of us, we're all good. And we don't believe we deserve love when we feel guilty. We don't believe that we deserve help when we feel shame. And most people who have lived through any sort of abuse have shame by default. They didn't, you know, they didn't sign up for the abuse, but being abused is very, very shaming. You feel guilty. You feel like you can't tell anybody. And you're carrying this in such a low place that it affects every aspect of your life. Do you think that if I feel subconsciously guilty somewhere, I'm going to withhold money from myself? Yep. Am I going to withhold opportunities? Yeah. Think about the last time you blew off time and self-sabotaged something you knew you needed to do. Self-sabotage comes from shame, guilt, fear, humiliation, and resistance. It is this unconscious, subconscious way that we withhold our own grace because we don't feel like we deserve it. So we have all of our psychic abilities. We have everything within us. We don't have five senses, we have more like 25. And as we remove the five negative emotions, shame, guilt, resentment, fear, humiliation, we begin to get access to all of the senses that were buried underneath those. A lot of times we glamorize 
celebrities or great people or Olympic athletes or musicians and painters. But let me ask you, what makes them great? What makes them great is they're not denying themselves of themselves. They're not saying no to who they truly are. And the reason we say no to who we truly are is because of those five emotions. I'm afraid to put myself out there. I'm afraid to be humiliated. What if someone judges my new business that I open, right? What if, some, what if I'm not good enough to do my own business? How many times have you been doing something you loved doing and would lose time and space in doing but didn't really feel like you deserved money for it? That's not coming from your abilities to be amazing creators. It comes from your shame, guilt, fear, resentment, and humiliation. So as I started letting go of all of this, which is exactly what we do with the timeline work, believe it or not, underneath the storytelling, we are losing huge levels of shame and guilt. How did you feel with that in the kitchen? Humiliated? Mm -hmm. Guilty, probably? Yeah. Shameful? Um, confused. Exactly. Right there, that could be so powerful that it could literally shut down intuition as an adult. So what I realized is that the more I began to process my own stuff, the more abilities would show up. And it got to the point where I just removed shame and guilt and fear and humiliation. And then all of a sudden, it came. What I thought we would do is take Susie through an actual time travel process so that you guys um, can all see it visually take place. I love to do this with Susie because she really gets into it and um, she is a very visual person so you can really see the emotion on her face and in her body. What I want you to notice um, watching this from where you are is that when Susie goes back on her timeline, watch, it, watch how old she looks. Watch how you can change from who you're seeing right now into a much younger version and watch her mannerisms and her words because what you're actually gonna notice is that Susie is going back in her timeline to those moments where she is that child. And you know, even if it was two weeks ago that we end up time traveling, it doesn't matter because you will see the shift in her physical body take place. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna always work in the present moment. And the present moment is all we ever have. And even though we are pretending to go back on a timeline, we never leave the present moment because everything is always happening right now. The past, present, and future are always happening right now. So the now moment is all we really need to care about. So when I do this process with someone, I don't ask them to go into their childhoods and start telling me about their childhood. Doesn't matter. I want them to go through what's happening right now. What's happening in your life right now that makes you feel stuck, blocked, small, insignificant, unloved, unheard, unseen, not appreciated, unworthy. I think one of the biggest issues I have going on right now is um, I have my stepdaughter living with me. Mm -hmm. And um, she has been living there, um, she's 16, just turned 16, and she's been living with us for about a year now. And prior to that, it was basically just me and my husband. And she's a daddy's girl, and so she's come in and it's been kind of like a whirlwind where I was the center of attention. And she's a really good kid. She's, she's a doer and she tries, she's a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. But I get so triggered by some of the things she does, like her poor eating habits, and um, she's overweight. And when I see her eat, it just makes me angry, and it makes me mad that she's not listening to what I have to say, and I want her to stop gaining weight. And I want to, it's like have control over her, but I'm so snippy with her and the things that she's doing. Mm -hmm. And then like um, her laziness. I really feel a sense of, it's so not fair. Why 
do I have to work all the time and I'm working towards a goal and she gets to sit around and do nothing. Mm -hmm. And she's just a kid. But in, I'm so triggered when I come home and I just see her flop down on the couch doing absolutely nothing. And it really kind of puts me into a rage sometimes. Okay. That emotion that you're feeling, is it rage? Is it frustration? Is it anger? Is it resentment? Which is I think it's resentment. It's, okay. it's so unfair. It's so unfair. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the eating habits? What's the emotion that you feel when you see her eat unhealthy for her body? Um, I guess it's kind of like a disgust. Disgust. Okay. So, from the outside looking in, you know, what other times are you feeling disgust in your life right now? Is it just with the kids at home right now? Um, I think it's quite a few of the kids at home right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to close your eyes for me. Take a deep breath, good. Now I want you to take me to another time that you felt disgusted. First thing that pops into your mind. What do you see? My grandpa sitting at the table. Okay. And what is he doing? He's helping me with my math homework. Okay. And so tell me the story as if you're living it right now. What is happening? Um, I'm not good at math. I don't like math. Mm -hmm. Math is not my friend. And he's yelling at me. Mm -hmm. He's so disappointed in me because mm -hmm. I don't get it. Okay. And I'm asking really good questions. Why? Why does it have to be X? Why can't it be Z? It's very important to me that I know why can't it be C? And he's yelling at me because the, there's no relevance to A and B and C. But to me it's very important and he's telling me how stupid I'm being. Mm -hmm. Just figure out the algebra problem. Okay. Now, when you're hearing his words say that to you in your mind, where do you feel that in your body? It's like in the pit of my stomach. What does it feel like? It's not. It's heavy. heavy. Heavy? Yeah. Take a deep breath and just be with that feeling for a minute. Just accept that feeling for me for just a minute. Now with another breath, I want you to imagine that you have the power to completely freeze the scene, freeze grandpa, freeze the room, freeze everyone in the room except you. Can you do that? Yeah. Good. Take a deep breath. Now what I want you to do is I want you to imagine that you have the power to change this story. You have the power to change everything about what is taking place. You also have the power to get help, bring someone else in to sit with you or be with you. You have the power to completely not be doing math homework at all. You have the power to do anything that you choose to do right here. The only thing that I ask is that it be something that really empowers you and allows you to have the feeling of instead of feeling that you're disappointing someone that you are being heard and seen and understood so would you like to have anybody come be with you yeah i have two dogs at okay. the time sasha and tiffany okay and they jump up on the table and they're big dogs and they have super they have like capes on and they're jumping on the table and they're like pawing at the homework and they're kicking it off of the table. Mm -hmm. They start licking me in the face and all of a sudden there are plus signs that are, look like butterflies. Mm -hmm. 
They're flying all over the room. It's like a fairy tale of magic rainbows. <laughs> and everything is just happy colors is now spinning around the room. And me and Tiffany and Sasha are flying around the room and we're just spinning around my grandpa. And the papers are just flying off of the table. Okay. And so what is grandpa doing now? He's still frozen. He doesn't, he's, he doesn't <laughs> exist. He's not in the picture. He's not there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So would you like to leave this story as it is, or would you like to resolve this issue with your grandfather? I'd like to just have A pluses all over the room. Okay. And pluses and minuses and division signs and A pluses, because I'm a good math student. Because you're a good math student. Take a deep breath. Now, how do you feel more understood right now, or accepted? A's make sense. Pluses make sense. So you're changing math altogether? Yes. Okay. Breathe that into your body. Now, I'd like you to fast forward just a little bit, and I would like for you to be doing homework with your grandfather again at another time. And this time, it's the math that you understand. And I want you to look into his eyes and I want you to notice how he is looking at you now. What do you see? He has compassion and he's proud of me. He's proud of you? Mm hmm Take a deep breath. Are you proud of you? I am. I get it. Where do you feel this in your body right now, this new feeling? It's like all over. Does it feel tight? No. What does it, it feel like? It feels like a warm relaxation. Good. Let's breathe this story into the body. Now what I would like you to do is just in your privacy of your own mind, I want you to imagine this new version of Susie, this amazing math student. I want you'd have fast forward throughout your life being this person. And I want you to come to the present moment as this person. What would your life have been like differently if you would have been a great math student and been appreciated for your math skills? I would have confidence in paying for things because I knew how to make the exact change. Good. Okay. What else? I would be able to teach my kids how to do math. Okay. I would have been able to balance, help my grandpa balance that last penny in his checkbook before he died. Take a deep breath. Really imagine doing that with him. Now when you're ready to come back, come back. How do you feel? Relieved. Relieved? Yeah. So the beautiful side of time travel is that it doesn't need to be relevant at all to the initial feelings. When she first sat down, she felt disgusted and resentful. And if you notice, what we went into was disappointment, which isn't either really one of those feelings. So if I was going to, from the outside looking in, the trigger that is occurring between her and her daughter is more about her daughter's ability to be authentic and just be whoever she chooses to be and she's not reprimanded or judged in your household for it. Mm -hmm. And so the child within you is looking at her, eating whatever she wants and laying on the couch whenever she wants as an example of what you weren't allowed to do as a child. So what's really taking place is the child within you is really wanting to be able to have all of that authentic behavior at home. And because you can't be authentic at home, when you see your children being authentic for things that you would have never been able to get away with as a child, mm -hmm. there's the trigger. Mm -hmm. 
So does that make sense? Yeah. So it's less about the specifics of the eating or the lounging and more about walking into your home and seeing someone be completely authentic and not really care what you think about it. And that's what you want more than anything. Right. So what we would want to do is we would want to time travel lots of different times when Susie couldn't be authentic as a child. Because she was trying to have fun with math with her grandfather. She was trying to get him to explain it to her in a way that made sense to her. And she was trying to be authentic about it. She was trying to be authentic about her not understanding math. And it wasn't okay. So as a child, when we have these experiences that we've all had and we're not allowed to be authentic, what happens is we have to grow up. But there's that little girl inside of us or the little boy inside of us that will never grow past that event. It is always stuck in that moment. And any time you see someone being completely authentic, there's gonna be a trigger within you because basically what's going on is your child is saying, well, that's not fair. How come I can't be authentic? How come I'm expected to go to work and take care of a family? You're also being asked to take care of a child who's not yours. So there's a lot on your shoulders right now, but you're not upset for the reasons you think. You're upset for the response of walking into the house, seeing someone be authentic when it wasn't okay for you. Yeah. So the remedy for this is also, besides doing the time travel and really diving down deep and, and changing the stories and bringing them all the way to the present moment, but also to recognize that when you walk into your house that you too can be authentic and that you need to make sure that you are being authentic to be able to even be authentic, which means that you're gonna set the intention when you get out of the car every day that when you walk in that you have worked hard and you deserve to relax and you deserve to eat whatever you want, whenever you want, and it be totally okay for you and you're not even gonna notice what anyone else is doing because it's all about you when you come home. Right? The more we can time travel this not being allowed to be authentic piece that just came up today, the less you'll even notice her. And the beauty is, is the less that you notice her, the more she will change quicker. Because your attention to something that you don't want amplifies it. It actually increases it. It pulls bad behavior from people because it is your reflection of the, of the subconscious energy that you hold in within. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we would want to time travel every time, or not every time, but the, the hot spots that take you back and completely allow you to be authentic in the new story. Bring in anything, anyone that you need to be the way that you would want it to be. So another example that I have for her is um, she wears sweats that are like three sizes too big for her and like oversized t-shirts and she wears them out of the house and that just triggers me in the morning so that would be another example of I when I couldn't be authentic why should she be able to wear the sweats and I was never allowed to wear the sweats and exactly. time travel the same thing exactly when you weren't allowed to dress how you wanted to eat how you wanted to be how you wanted to do math how you wanted to well and that takes me right to a thought of um, I remember we were never allowed to wear dresses in the summer I mean, right when you said that, it was just a trigger mm -hmm. that, okay, so why should she be allowed to wear baggy sweats? Okay, right. that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. So basically what's happening is your child is just being triggered when you see someone be authentic in a way that you weren't allowed to be. You had the military dad. Yeah. <laughs> the drill sergeant dad. Yeah. Those things were unacceptable. So you being you as a child was unacceptable. And the fact that your stepdaughter gets to be a child is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Do you see how it has nothing to do with her? Yeah. Yeah. And the key points are to go back into the exact moment and feel the feeling and let your body fully accept and dive down deep into it. Because if you don't feel the feeling, you're not activating the trauma completely. You're just having a memory and it's very easy to dissociate from the feeling because that's what we've been in resistance for our whole lives. So if I allow myself to fully go into humiliation, it's not gonna feel good, is it? No. 
But I'm right there with myself knowing that it's only going to be a few seconds that I need to really, really be present with this humiliation because I'm gonna be able to make this all right for the first time in my life. And so when I take a deep breath, and if you notice, I asked her to keep taking deep breaths, and the reason why is I was actually watching her integrate the energy into her cellular structure. With every breath, she was downloading. With every breath, she was sending this information to the cells that it was okay for them to take on this new story. So with that being said, the breath is our greatest tool, and it is about fully integrating the feeling in and then changing it and then fully integrating the new story. So the freezing of the scene is where the fun really starts to happen. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, okay. So it's almost like a director getting to stand outside of their set and go, how do I want the scene to look? What actors do I want to be here? What props do I need? You know, like Susie, do I need plus signs and rainbows? Do I need... Um, a superhero to fly through the window. And based on the age that you regress to, you will notice that the child's story is very age appropriate, you know? And the one thing that I didn't ask Susie is, you know, how old did she feel? And that is something that I would make sure that I would ask someone because then they can re resonate with what seven year cycle they're in. And, you know, I'll go into that a little bit later about the seven year cycles but it will it allows her to know um, in her own mind about how old she felt and so then for when she's imagining her new story it will usually be age appropriate so say if i did a regression and someone was 16 they're not usually going to have you know a superhero fly through the window and rescue them they might have you know a brand new car show up so it will be exactly what that child needs in order to really complete the circuit in a more positive, empowered way instead of feeling constantly victimized. So, felt good, right? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of times when we are so disassociated from ourselves that when we go back into a memory, we're looking at ourselves from the third party. And I will tell you that you will still have a very powerful healing if you're doing that, if you're watching yourself, right, having the trauma. But if you can become the child fully and using the words, I am feeling, instead of I see her feeling, mm -hmm. what you're doing is you're even 50% more fully embracing and accepting the story as in the now moment. So when I say I feel humiliated right now, and there's people walking up to me and they're making fun of me and they're telling me that I'm poor, right? i am just become the child instead of saying, she's really feeling humiliated. Do you, feel that, do you feel that shift? So when I fully become the child and I fully allow myself to feel it, she felt it right away. Susie felt it right away, right here in our power center. That's usually when we're a little child and we're not allowed to be who we came to be. And then she noticed is when she changed the story, it was all here, which included her heart center and her throat chakra, which is our truth. And it was all light. So as we're doing that, as we're telling our body the new story, and then we're integrating it with breath, it will be forever changed. And now she's just gotta practice her new life, right? Because this version of Susie's now great at math. <laughs> when I say the first seven years, this is where the core belief systems are really, really integrated and downloaded into the consciousness. And the belief systems becomes the filter of every thought and every situation and every dose of reality that occurs after that moment. So we're literally seeing through the eyes of in that moment, I'm not allowed to be me and it's not safe to be me mm -hmm. because you are physically smacked mm -hmm. so there's now a safety issue in you being you so mm -hmm. you'll notice that until you process this moment when moments when you were really going to be authentic you might even have anxiety because your body's bracing for for physical pain mm -hmm. I know when I was a child and you know I was smacked for being myself you know every time I would be myself 
it, you know, before I started doing this processing, there would be that anxiety of, oh my gosh, I, there's a safety issue in me being myself. Mm -hmm. And the core belief systems are so deeply ingrained into our seven year cycle that a lot of times they're, they're so below the subconscious that they're unconscious, mm -hmm. right? And people will say, oh, I'm just introverted, or I am just shy, or I am just, um, you know, I, I don't feel good around people. And the subconscious belief is, I don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. And then the unconscious belief is, I'm not safe to be me. Mm -hmm. And when we look at symptoms, we have to understand that that is a byproduct of a root. And until we dive down deep into the root, we will really never feel the ultimate relief of changing the core belief. Because what you did in that kitchen with your dad was you changed a core belief. So it's not just about time traveling to feel better in your body. It's about time traveling and pulling belief systems that no longer resonate with you mm -hmm. and changing them in the moment from an empowered state and saying, I am free to be myself. And you know what? When I'm myself, then everybody else is free to be themselves. Mm -hmm. And you will watch that that will have a very powerful effect on your reality now. As the child is such a sponge of unconditional love that when it has a mark on that and that's tainted, it is a whole change on the entire perspective. And, and when I teach about the wounds that, child, that children have, there's four basic wounds. And the first one is, I am unloved or I am unlovable. The second one is, I don't have nurturing or I am not safe. You know, that first initial connection with mom or, you know, did you move 100,000 times or, you know, what did, what, did, what did your structure and foundation look like as a child? And the third one is, is I am not seen for my authentic self. And the fourth one is I am not heard for my authentic self. So when we have these wounds in childhood, they stay with us forever until we clear them because they are just another aspect of our experience they're not good, they're not bad, they, but they are a, now they are a creation of the character. Mm -hmm. They make you who you have been up until this point. You are the one that it's not okay for you to be authentic now. Right. So the character develops the first seven years. We can have a counseling session. You can tell me your whole entire story, but do you want to tell it or do you want to change it? Mm -hmm. T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another. We get so caught up in our stories. And we hold so firm to these identities. And we hold so fir firm to our memories. Because without them, who are we? You know, in my Master of Light class, I ask everyone to imagine that they have amnesia. And they wake up in their home and no one's there. Who are they? Who are you? Who are you without the people reminding you of who you are? There is no right or wrong way to do this. Now, if you were to train with me and do a practitionership that was going to be teaching you, you know, a month solid of how to be a time travel practitioner and you really needed that, then yes, there would be scripts because we do have scripts to help people. But the thing is, is if you do this enough on yourself, you know how it feels to be in different spaces. And so when you're doing it with someone else, you're using your empathy to guide them. Mm -hmm. Because I was using my empathy and my intuition to guide you. And a lot of times when we get very logical minds, right, or very left brain, academic type of personalities, they feel like they need to know exactly what is happening. And they're not used to diving into their imagination yet and that would be someone I would guide more. I would help them come up with different scenarios. I would help them dust off their intuition and their um, imagination a little bit and we would have to do it a few times. And there are even times where I've gotten someone who's so logical that we physically have to write letters to people, but that's rare. That's rare that we can't dust off the imagination with, with one or two sessions. 
let's talk a little bit about doing this process by yourself because I know that you guys it's have all easy. done this. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is the only way that I actually learned how to do it. So to me, it's a lot easier for me to time travel myself sometimes than it is other people. Also that I'm a medical intuitive and so I can see things going on in your body and it's, it's pretty wild to watch. You know, as you're going down deep into the dense feelings, I can feel and see biological changes happening in you. And that's not something I can really see in myself. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I get distracted by what I'm seeing when I'm doing it with a client, but when I do it with myself, I really have to just be there so in my presence to keep myself accountable, to go all the way down deep into the feeling and be present as the I am. And when I catch myself being that third person or watching the event, I have to be present enough to pull myself back in. And you'll know it how you feel. The feelings are not as strong when you're on the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. That's definitely how I felt when you were asking me about the situation with my ex-husband versus the situation with my dad. Totally. And, you know, in retrospect, the, the seven-year cycles, the first seven years of our life is really when all of our belief systems are created. So that moment in the kitchen, what belief system was created? That it wasn't okay for me to be me. And where else has that carried out in your life? <laughs> A bazillion <laughs> ways. My marriage, my failed marriage, um, my career, um, my ability to chase my dreams, um, my belief that I can support myself by chasing my dreams, mm -hmm. um, friendships, all kinds of things. Right? Everything. Yeah. So even though we did all this amazing timeline work and we're no longer triggered emotionally, our feedback system is still showing up as the old person. And so we don't actually change it. So the, I believe that the aftermath and the practical application of after doing the time travel is as important or more important than the, the process itself. Right? Yeah. Wouldn't you agree? Because mm -hmm. it's great to do the time travel, but unless we really pull it into physical reality from the energetic perspective, then we don't really own it. So what's, what's that look like? What do you do? When so you pull it like in a perfect example reality? would be if I time traveled a time where um, I felt humiliated being authentic, which is a big one, you know, because I think that as, a, as, as people who are really doing their spiritual work, we're moving into that authentic stage. Mm -hmm. We're moving into that place where we just, we don't want to pretend who we are anymore. We want to just be authentic. And, but because there's old trauma there, when we were a little kid, when we tried to be authentic and we were told to not be, mm -hmm. or we were actually punished for being authentic, mm -hmm. we find that that actually shows up in our reality now as the more authentic we get, we're physically punished for it or we're judged for it or we're in trouble for it. Mm -hmm. And what happens is once we go in and actually change the trigger, so say I go back and I change the timeline of when I was humiliated for being authentic, and then I am now a changed, I'm a, I'm a changed being. I'm a completely new person without that trauma in my life. Does my brain body connection know that or am I still gonna be introverted, mm. right? Now I've actually gotta put myself on the stage to be authentic and see what shows up in my reality because law of reflection is gonna reflect back to me what I just changed energetically. That's my uh, feedback system. That's my biofeedback system to let me know where my belief system now is. So a lot of times we'll do this timeline work but we won't put ourselves out there, right? Because our brain-body connection still says it's not safe for me to be authentic. Even though you've cleared the timeline, you yeah. haven't just brought your body to the stage to show up and go, I don't know, am I? Like talking about a shameful moment in my past. Yeah. So, so, what that, is that? so in order to avoid feeling the shame again. Right. So you just shut down, even though you've done the timeline work. Okay. It's I'm almost like up. you you know, you get your hair done, but then you never leave the house because you're afraid it's gonna look exactly the way it did before. <laughs> you know, your brain yeah. body connection is mm -hmm. its own consciousness. The soul has its own consciousness. There's those three aspects of us, that, that conscious, subconscious, and unconscious. And if all three of those levels of consciousness that make up us are not on the same page, 
we're going to have what's called miss emotion and we're going to be have self-sabotaging moments mm -hmm. where we do something and we're not sure why we did that you know or we're not going to put ourselves out there even though our, our soul has done a ton of work look at all of the people out there who've been studying spirituality for you know 30 40 years and still are not walking their talk mm -hmm. what is that about They've done all this work, but they haven't put it into the practical aspect of now becoming the changes that they've worked so hard to study and create. And to like be able to recognize the moments when it is applicable. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's that's that's, that's that's still my problem. Is being in the it. moment, recognizing yeah. when we have to actually utilize the the efforts that we put in. Mm -hmm. For sure. Okay. It's being present enough to recognize, mm -hmm. oh, okay, this is a moment that I can time travel. I'm feeling this. Yes. I don't like it. Right. Let's do something about it. Yep. Absolutely. And But also to facilitate the time travel, the aftermath of the time travel. Ooh. Because mm -hmm. the aftermath of the time travel, we've changed the timeline. As soon as we do the process, we change the timeline. But now it is actually vibrating that into the beingness of our physical reality. So once we change it energetically, now we've got to map it into our lives by becoming the change that we just created. Because if we don't now become that change, it is very easy for our system to go back into the old patterns even though the vibration has been neutralized. Because the story that was before was extremely negative and the story we replace it with is very positive. That right there neutralizes the energy and law of attraction is no longer s responding to the frequency of the trigger. Right. But because your brain body connection isn't aware of that information, we'll find ourselves completing those patterns again but without being triggered. Have you noticed that you still sometimes do things that you used to do but it doesn't have the same feeling attached to it? Like okay, a, yeah. a TV show that you used to absolutely love, mm -hmm. you watch now and it doesn't give you the same resonance. Oh yeah, because you've shifted. I Who you used are to do that is different. With Bridget Jones' Diary. I I recognized and like her character resonated with me, and now I watch it and I'm like, why did I ever? <laughs> what is that's that about? so not me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other thing I remember doing because it does work so much in the moment. I remember when, you know, I made a list of moments where I felt shameful mm -hmm. and was time traveling those. Yeah. And I did the ones that had the most power behind them first. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went back and I looked at some of the other ones to do them. And I was like, why did I put this on this list? Now that you know the steps to take, will you go on your own time travel journeys? Will you go on your own self-exploration, come to better understanding of yourself, find resolution, and ultimately take back the reins to create the shape of things to come into your life? <laughs>